conceptual stuff, perspective and things. People talk Real about talk, it. Like throwing shots. All of the elements. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse. Uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hello, everybody. It's Dr. Ray dropping in on you. Hope everybody is off to a great start for this week that you are centered and focused on transitioning into the new year with full momentum. You've heard me say that and talk about it, but as you've just seen on the intro to this video, we're still in the midst of a fundraiser. The goal is to get to 10,000 by the end of the year. I'm challenging everybody who watches this video to make that happen. Uh, let's make it happen. Um, now, after hearing this video, I might not get jacked. But I'm because I'm, I'm, I'm going to be real with you here. Um, it's time to have this conversation. Um, and so I'm going to get right into it. And uh, the powers that be, I've got to be very selective with my my word choice. And I'm going to be direct and honest from where I sit and where I be. But I'm going to make sure um, I observe all of the community guidelines and all of that stuff that they have out there uh best man the best man final chapters now let me say something here so we get this very clear the best man uh franchise has some of my favorite actors and actresses um it is definitely one of my more favorite franchises um the last one had a punch in the gut that I could have dealt with. I would, you know, I, sometimes you don't want the heavy. Sometimes you want the funny, you want the okay, you know, on the edge stuff, but you, you know, uh, but best man holiday is what I'm talking about, but it was still good. Uh, I still enjoyed the franchise. The first one to me is still the best, the best man holiday definitely had messaging and uh, love and perseverance and you know, all that stuff, so, okay. Now, I haven't seen uh, the series that's supposed to close out uh, the story, the final chapter, I think it's like eight, if I'm not mistaken, episodes on Peacock, uh, which tells me that they were having problems getting the movie funded uh, and couldn't get the executive produ uh, production done. It's a creative way to do it. Uh, Peacock is behind it. Um, you know, you got you got it out there. Here, here is my problem. Uh, I had a young brother who I have advised. I'm not gonna say mentored. I haven't spent that much time around him, but I've watched him grow. And at time, he has contacted me, and we met, we talked, and I've watched this dude go from sleeping in his car to be on the verge of totally blowing up um, and he is a brother um, he loves his people he, you know um, I, I mean I, 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 I dig where he's at you know he's his own person he's really feeling where he's at and power to him uh, he posted something 
yesterday he says I got watching best man final chapters got to ep got halfway through episode four turned it off I'm sick of this ish immediately immediately I knew what he was talking about because I got nieces and nephews that I spent Christmas with and they could not stop saying non-binary got on my nerves and they were joking and they were just tossing it around but you know because them i mean a lot you, you will be surprised how many people are totally disconnected to what's going on how many people aren't really aware of this whole uh gender obscurity and um uh gender ambiguity and everything else and all of these different things that are at play and they aren't aware of it you know they're out there so you know it's like a new term to them and it's been around um in my in in my seat of studies now for some time because i've been seeing it and i've been watching it and anyone who knows me knows that my issue isn't so much in people having the freedom to do and be what they want to be uh i believe that there's a freedom to do that and that nobody has a right to stop another person from doing that but i also think that in the confines of the social constructs of uh race we have to look at where we are as a people and understand what can be acceptable what can't be acceptable or what we promote now anybody who knows me knows that i have family friends grew up i grew up in a black church in the choir so I am not homophobic. Well, number one, as a mental health and behavioral specialist uh, who literally understands the term phobia as being a uh, legitimate uh, mental disorder, uh, very few people are actually f uh, homophobic, which means an irrational and inexplicable fear. Disagreeing with someone doesn't make you a phobia. Not being willing to approve of what they desire to do doesn't make you a phobe. Uh, might make you a bigot depending on how you move about it. Might make you a hate monger, but it doesn't make you a phobe. But that term carries such a negative connotation with it and it carries such a weight nobody wants to associate with it because so it's, it has become a bullying term. You know, if, I, if you're not saying what I want you to say, then you're, you're, you're a homophobe, you are transphobe, you are, no, I'm a person who holds to my particular beliefs and says, go ahead and do you, but you can't make me co-sign it. Now, I love you, we can be friends, we can be tight, I'm not trying to sell you on who I am and make you be what I am, and I don't expect you to sell me on you. I expect me to look at you as a person, see you as a person, uh, and, and, and treat you accordingly. Now, I'm saying all this because somehow, after two full movies, that term, non-binary, and some other things, have come off into this movie and from what I understand by the average person who's watched it most people are absolutely crazy about it and I gotta understand uh, you're talking about some pretty decent actors these aren't trash actors these, this, these, this isn't the A-list but these guys are good and they've been around for a long time Mars Chestnut's one of my favorites um, Neil Long definitely one of my favorites uh, you know Regina uh, Hall, I mean, she, she she's decent. Uh, I mean, Tay Diggs, only problem I got with Tay is he started this with me, with that, with that whole thing. Another story, another story. What am I getting at? I think that we've got to be careful because blacks have this desire to be accepted. That's what got us into the bind we got into with integration is they won't let us buy from them. They won't let us eat in their restaurants. And it ended up costing us dearly because we gave up what we owned, which was far more valuable than them liking us. And just because they are forced to receive us into certain spaces still doesn't mean that they like us. And so we're always fighting battles and defending and trying to uh, play nice. Um, 
and, and I, I'm not about hurting anybody. I'm not about uh, tearing down anybody. And I want to make this very clear. Like I said, I have some people in my family extremely close to me who are part of that community. And I love them with all my heart and will go to the mat. I, I, I will die to protect them. And they understand how I feel about where they're at, but they also know there's absolutely nothing they can do to stop me from loving them. So it has nothing to do with hate. Now, somebody's gonna make it about hate and really they can do that, but it's nothing about hate. To me, what I'm looking at is when you start creating nebulosity and cloudiness and ambiguity uh, around things that have clarity in the way of how we identify ourselves, you simultaneously disrupt the understanding of roles. Now, these roles have been in play for millennium and they have valid value. There's a reason why I'm built as a male a certain way. There's a reason why a woman is built as a, as a female a certain way. And saying I don't see myself like that doesn't change that. But what, what you can do is you want to check out of that identity. Okay. But when it starts to be pushed as a mainstream idea, uh, I had this conversation with my brother who... <laughs> uh, at 49 decided that he was ready to be a dad again and you know hey if it keeps him young and the dude looks 30 so if, if it keeps him young him uh, you know I got enough kids but uh, I'm leading in the kid race out of my siblings I think yeah but anyway we were having this conversation and we were talking about, you know, both he and I have adult kids and we have a couple that are still minors. And the conversation is our older kids are good. You know, we got them to a point where they're good. They know who they are. There are no questions. Uh, it's real simple. This is what you do. This is who you are. This is how you get down. As a woman, you carry yourself like this. As a man, you carry yourself like this. These are your responsibilities to yourself, to your home, to your family, to your community, and to your race. This is what we've been given. Uh, this is uh, and I, this is what I've given to my children to the best of my ability. I understand that kids are going to venture off. Kids are going to do things. Kids are going to come up with their own ideas. But what I want to do is set the standard of what our family values are. And we have, as a family, have a right to have specific values. We don't go off dissing other families for their values. We don't go off attacking people because they're not like us. But what we do is we have values because in these values, it sets the standard and it sets the expectation of what we are to become. Without standards, without clarity, it's easy to be misdirected, it's easy to be distracted, it's easy to be misled, it's easy to be put on a path that does not serve you. And one of the things that we have had to deal with, and I'm not even talking about homosexuality, I'm talking about in the area of heterosexuality, is the uh, feminization of the black male image. Now, it's not only in the black men, it's also an issue with, with, with our women and how we deal with one another. And we're seeing a lot of this play out as well. I'm gonna get into that another day because it's gonna be a two, at least a two part series to this. But when you look at the feminization of the black male image, we're not talking about homosexuality. We're talking about the emasculation uh, and the, the ripping away of what we see as traditional masculinity. The, crea the creation of the term toxic masculinity was a major attack on masculinity. There's no such thing as toxic masculinity. The things that are being designated as toxic masculinity isn't masculinity at all. It's brokenness. It's hatred. It's all kind of it's fuckboyisms it's every because a man is doing it doesn't make it masculine and that's the thing we need to understand true masculinity is expressed in a willingness to protect true masculinity is expressed in a willing to provide true masculinity is expressed in an ability to step out in front and be a guard and be a leader and take responsibility for the well-being of those under your covering that's masculinity anything that's destructive is not masculine it is simply being curtained as masculine so that masculinity can be attacked 
There has been a consistent effort in the media over the last 40 years to easily reel back in masculinity. Um, we went from being real, well-groomed men, which I think every brother should be. I don't think you should go ungroomed, but gr groomed doesn't mean clean shaven to me. Groom means clean. Everything in, in, in a certain order and to each person that is different. But my, uh, my facial hair is an expression of my manhood. It's one of the things that represents this uniqueness in my physiological expression of masculinity. Most women can't grow it. So it immediately distinguishes me as being different. And this is a natural thing. I didn't create it. I don't have to go out and find some way to make it happen. It just normally happens. It naturally happens. So it gives me a very natural physiological visible expression of something that makes me different than the female. And so what happens is we went from being well-groomed to metrosexual. And that's why I say it's going to be a problem. I say because after metrosexual, it's going to be a real slippery slope right into feminine behavior. Now, I have no problems. I get my, I keep my nails manicured. Um, every now and then, I got to go get those feet taken care of because my feet are do numbers and do some stuff. So I have to go get that taken care of. Have no problem with none of that stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a way that you walk, a way that you carry yourself. There's a certain thing about you that literally when it's done it is a natural attractive force to women it's a natural aphrodisiac to women uh from the way you speak from the way you move from the confidence you have and when you're able to rip away at things piece by piece you look up and you're losing it all and you don't know it uh you look good you dress good you represent it you fly you got the great job you got the great car you got the great house but you lack the confidence to stand up square your shoulders and stick your chest out and say, this is the direction we're going. And no, we're not going to do that. And no, you will not move against my home like that. No, you will not move against my family like that. No, you, and, 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 and no, you will not mishandle me in this workplace. And all of a sudden it became whatever I got to do to keep the bag, whatever I got to do to get along. And now uh, we spend more on beauty than they do. I'm exaggerating, but way too much on some of the things that I'm seeing on guys. Um, and again, everybody's got the right to do their own thing. But when it starts being presented and painted and there is a clear narrative and agenda that's saying this is what we are producing, you got to ask why. Anytime there's an agenda and when you know there's an agenda is when you see it in places that it don't make sense but it's there anyway. They, in other words, they're force feeding it to you. Then there's an agenda. There is a reason. And if there's an agenda, there's a reason behind the agenda. So then you have to ask, why is it important to do this? You have to ask the question that Dave Chappelle asked before he walked away from it all. If, if, if it's not that big of a deal, why do you still want me to wear this dress? Man, Martin Ward and 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 and, and so and so, and he's naming all the people. He said, "Well, since everybody's did it, it's not that big a deal. I don't want to do it." They send somebody else in. Same thing. So then he 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 comes. He he says, "Wait, something ain't right about this. If they if it's being pushed that hard, something can't be right about it. I don't want to do it. I'm not doing it." Okay, now I don't know what's happened. I don't know if he ever broke or whatever, but I know at that point he had, he said no. So. Then you have to say, why? Why is it important to put every man in Hollywood in a situation where you are releasing them of their masculinity, uh, especially the men who have the attention of women? Because here, here's the thing. If you're dealing with a man who has the attention of the women, guess who's also paying attention to him? Men who want the attention of women. So when if they do it, then it, it, it can't be that bad. Sisters ain't mad at them for doing it. It can't be that bad. And, and, and you don't understand how the subconscious works. There's a programming vice going on. Now, here's my thing. Back to this whole non-binary thing. Again, a person has the right to choose what they want to choose. I'm not, I'm not here to tell. I'm, not, I'm doing the best I can to be who I believe I'm supposed to be. 
and I'm going to teach my children based off of my values, what I believe they should be, and then I'm going to love them for whatever they become. Uh, but what I won't do is just let them say, go for whatever, and say, no, I'm going to show you what I believe is the best way. Now, what way you choose is going to be up to you, and I'm going to love you regardless. But here's the thing that you got to see with this thing. Here's how you know it's an agenda. In California, I have a friend who lost their child. Matter of fact, I talked to somebody last night who had a friend who lost their job. Lost their job, been on the job 30 years. Teaching. Refused to call Jacob, Sarah, Sarah, Jacob. I can't get rich, which one it went, but, 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 but basically, the kid identified as the opposite gender and the teacher refused to call them the opposite gender and 30 years in the game she was terminated so a value system you hold that's a part of your identity for Six, seven, eight, nine, ten times longer than this kid has lived has now been snatched from you and you have no rights to stand on that premises uh, and that that, 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 that that value system. The big thing that scares me is in California, the kid that did this didn't, the, the push to get her fired didn't come from the parents. It came from the kid reporting her to the school and the school pushed it. The parents don't even have a right to tell the kid they can't do it. Let me say this again. If you've got a six-year-old kid, you don't have the right to teach them that they have to be either male or female in California because you can end up losing your kid. This is what we're doing. So now, if you want to see society decline, Put, the, put adult decisions in the hands of babies with no adult guidance and watch what happens. Now, if we're studying history, we can sit up and say, okay, let's, look, let's take our emotions out of the equations. Let's take our biases out of the equations. Let's take whatever uh, level of bias we have out of it. And let's just look at history. Study the fall of Rome, study the fall of Greece, study the fall of Persia, study the Chaldean Empire collapse in Babylon. Those are consecutives going the opposite direction. Chaldean Empire in Babylon. Well, you can take the fall of Babylon. The fall of Babylon conquered by the Chaldeans, the fall of the Chaldeans conquered by the Persians, the fall of the Persians conquered by the Greeks, the fall of the Greeks conquered by the Romans. And look at what the common denominator is. Not the only thing, but definitely one of the things. Number one, you spurn mar marriage, you spurn family. You start to move opposite of what is natural, and it simply happens. I'm not making this shit up. I'm telling you what I've studied, what I've watched, and I looked at the behaviors. And what happened? Again, this isn't about telling somebody what they can do. I think that when you start talking about sexual identity, when you start talking about how you see yourself, that is an adult decision because it has long reaching consequences that can be massively catastrophic and unbearable for many adults. And now a child is being given the decision and it's being promoted. That's the other thing. It's being promoted. It's being advocated. It's being, hey, this is what you want to do. It's being made popular. I think that certain things need to be, that 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 fall in their gaze should be left to adults. Now, if you get to a certain age and this is how you feel and you want to roll like that, roll like that. Make that decision when your mind is developed enough to understand how your life might play out doing it. Because the things that are ultimately implicated in this decision won't play out or shouldn't play out until you're an adult anyway. But what happens when you start getting kids to make decisions about their sexual orientation and their sexuality 
before they become sexually mature. And I'm not talking about 13 or 4. I'm talking about able and enough mentally and emotionally to be able to determine and make a decision about what the fallout of a sexual encounter might be. Most people don't understand that in their 30 and 40s. That when I lay down with this person, it's more than just a physiological encounter. I'm exchanging so much of myself and receiving so much of them. And I'm going to take them with me. They're going to take me. And, and you, you, what happens is, even though that's not what a child is thinking, you've opened the gate to the conversation of sexuality in the mind of a minor. And now here come the pedophiles and the ephebophiles. And for those of you that, that uh, don't know the difference, and I, I'm not saying that you don't, but most people don't. Most people uh, group anybody who is sexually attracted to a minor, regardless of age, in the pedophilia uh, category, and that's not accurate. Pedophilia is a sexual attraction to uh, minors who are prepubescent, meaning they haven't started sexual maturity yet. They haven't gone into puberty. Uh, they are prepubescent minors. Uh, Ephebophilia is sexual attraction to minors who have entered into sexual puberty. They're adolescents. They've started developing sexually. You can see the physiological development on females and the muscular development on males. And that is where the febophiles are. Both of them are equally sick, but they're different. Uh, but what happens is when you're pushing that agenda and you're making the water murky and you are creating these blurred lines you're opening the door to sit up and say a bunch of other stuff is okay see some st some standards were never meant to be cracked some barriers were never meant to be broken some some things were set into place to maintain order to maintain a level of livelihood and safety uh to allow us to develop and to to uh, mature and to grow into functional human beings and it's constantly being interrupted, disrupted and it's taking its toll on society as a whole. Look at the moral decline. Look at what used to be wrong that's right now and, and, and then we've got people that will defend it as being okay. But, but it can't be okay if I can give you scientific data that shows the damage. When I look at the long-term implications and I can show you where it's causing harm, then it can't be right. Because naturally right does not cause harm. We've got a problem. And it's so easy for us to want to overlook it. Number one, it's just entertainment, right? How many times have I proven that wrong? It's just entertainment. Nobody's sitting up spending $5 million for a 30-second slide on the Super Bowl, the most watched event uh, every year. Nobody's spending $5 million for 30 seconds if it's just entertainment. Somebody knows who's in the responsible for the ad budget that if you put it in front of people and you do it right, it has an impact on what they're going to do. We will make money off of this. That means we have the ability to convince people to do something that they weren't going to do before we moved on. That's one 30-second encounter. It's in the music. It's in television. It's in the video games. It's in the conversation. It's happening at school. And you don't think it's having an impact on your child? Hell, I did a study on Christmas. When I got home, I did a study on Christmas. I scrolled and I looked for family portraits of people taking shots of their family. And my goal was to find how many people were looking at their phone. There was one portrait where it was at least eight people in a general area. The person was shooting from upstairs. So you can get the dining room and the family room all in one shot. And in those, in those two different places total, there was about eight people every last person on their phone you and i did this i wanted to i wanted to see when you got a bunch of us in a place where in the past we would be fellowshipping we would be talking we would be interacting there wouldn't be any distractions everybody's in there and everybody's in their own world inside of that device 
that's how powerful it is. Number one is it's designed to give you a dopamine rush. So every time you pick it up, you get a dopamine rush. It literally makes you feel better to pick up that phone and you don't even realize it's happening. That's the first thing. Then when you open it up, there's automatic programming in the advertising, in the music. No matter where you go to, there are certain messages being sent. And that's where we're at. Go to a restaurant, man. I've been to a restaurant and I swear, probably, it was a couple of years ago, Marion and I took the grandson to go to IHOP. And we're sitting there and we look over and there's a table of a whole family of about seven. Another table and there's probably six or seven, eight. And, and, and one more large top. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm checking them out and there's this table. Mom's on her phone, dad's on her phone, 12 year olds on their phone, nine years old on their phone, five year old is on their phone. And the two year old had a nice little plastic cover over their phone with a stand on their phone. You don't, and you still think it's a game. The programming is on 10 and we are being consumed. And if we don't take time to look at it, we're gonna wish we had. Uh, it was propaganda with a lot less complexity and leverage in the 20s and the early 30s that allowed Germany to do what Germany did. I'm not gonna get into the details, that's a whole nother thing, but Hitler was able to convince an entire nation that exterminating uh, European Jews was cool. And it only took him 12 months of propaganda to get them to allow him to have 12 years of terror. <sighs> Keep playing. Keep setting it aside. Keep ignoring it. And we'll have a world that's consuming us that we cannot manage, we cannot control, we cannot stop. And the, the world we're supposed to be leaving our kids will be non-existent. So that's my take on it. Man, I, and like I said, I love the franchise. I love the people in it. Uh, I'm just like, does every single thing have to come with that messaging? And if it does, then we have to be aware of what's going on. A coincidence here and there. An equal representation in the sense of actual proportionality to representation in the population. It can't be in everything because it's not happening with every person. You know, uh, my 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 thing is, I don't want to blot out anybody I don't have a desire to blot out anybody but I have a strong desire to create strong black men I have a strong desire to create healthy black women I have a strong desire to create a strong black community and what happens naturally happens naturally you're gonna have people who venture off and do their own thing that's always happens homosexuality isn't new it's not something that just popped up it's always been there uh, but when you start making it the cool thing through media uh, content, you start now enticing kids to move into a way in an area that they aren't naturally drawn to. It's just cool. You gotta be very careful with that. Again, not about hate. I love my family. I love my friends. I've got high school friends I grew up with that are part of that community. And they are my, we have a ball when we're around each other. Like I said, I grew up in the black church in the choir, traveling. So I've been around people who are a part of the community who I see as just people. That's the difference too. And I think that's what bothers me is when I grew up, I was around gay people. I was around um, and, you know, I took piano and guitar, so the people who taught me 
who are part of the community. Uh, the difference is they were just people who are part of the community. Now there's this big highlight, this big beaming light that's saying, this is what you want. This is the, and the, and the sad part is our people are still not cared for and treated the same in that community. I'm gonna say this and I'm probably gonna piss some more people off. How much noise did the LBG, LGBT, L, LGBTQ community, y'all doing too much, LGBTQ community, how much noise did they make for the nine, 10 months that Brittany Griner was held? They'll probably blow my channel up. But that sister was in a, in a horrible way. And I seen more of us that are not part of the community championing for her release uh, than I saw any consistent. And I'm not saying it didn't happen. I didn't see it on the front. I didn't see the noise that they normally make in other situations. Because when they want to make their presence felt, they do it and that's the thing you know they do uh we should have actually taken a page from the book of how they created so much power with such a small nucleus in such a short period of time go back to 1972 and just follow and look at what they've done so they're more tightly organized than we've been and they've accomplished more. But my whole thing is they didn't go to bat for her. Now, there may be some things that I'm unaware of that were, what was behind it and, and, and I'm not beyond standing corrected. But my whole thing is what's going to be best for us long-term as a collective? And that includes our members our members of our race that are also members of the LGBTQ community. To, because as far as I'm concerned, they are still a part of our race. Um, and that's the thing that we've got to learn to do too, is be disagreeable and still connected. Uh, we disown one another way too easily. And you can't win like that because all people will consistently do is highlight uh, highlight um, things that we are not connected on, things we disagree on, and that creates divisiveness. We can't allow that to happen. So I'm going to get ready to get out of here, uh, but I had to talk about that. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out. Like I said, if you believe in the work we're doing, if you believe in what we stand for, uh, if you believe what we're trying to build and the work we're doing in the community, show some love, show some support. Go to the description box, click the link. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have a great day.